It's funny to me that some of the most popular and discussed games of recent years like Minecraft, Breath of the Wild, Elden Ring, and Battle Royales like Fortnite and Apex Legends all have something in common that many other games don't. They give the player the freedom to explore, experiment, and engage with the game systems however they choose. The player has little to no interruptions from gameplay, can discover the world at their own pace, and approach situations and objectives in any way and any order they want. So why is it then that a majority of games in the open world genre, a genre that boasts of freedom and endless possibilities, insist on holding the player's hand? The formula of the open world game has become stale with repetition, and a majority of AAA studios create games that quickly run together in a blur of chasing icons. These games can often be fun, and even addicting, but after over a decade of similar feeling games they end up repetitive and unfulfilling because of a lack of player discovery, an illusion of freedom, and an unfortunate lack of emphasis on what makes these games so fun. The games become a list of chores to complete instead of a mysterious and unknown world begging to be explored. An example of this illusion of freedom I found recently was in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. A gold treasure was clearly marked on the map and I spent time searching it out. I found that there was a locked door with no way to open it that I could find protecting the treasure. I spent 30 plus minutes trying to find a way to break it down, find another way in, or find a key to unlock it. I left without retrieving the treasure, only to return a little later in a story mission where an NPC character just walked up and opened the door. Oh, of course! I'm a fucking clown! How did I not realize I couldn't do that thing the game told me about on my map for no reason? I'm so silly. These types of situations happen frequently, but by pulling some information away from the player, by allowing the freedom to play however they choose, and by allowing them to do things without restrictions, we could have walked in that door and the guy says, oh no, this place was robbed, and Eivor could have responded and said, no, I was here already. Catch up, you're a dumbass. <sighs> Alright, let's move on. Instead of marking enemy camps on a map, along with hundreds of other icons, allow the player to organically discover the camp and entice them to explore it on their own. Because what feels more rewarding? Discovering and overcoming an obstacle using your own knowledge and skill? Or when the obstacle is shoved in your face and presented as a boring errand to be completed? Another example is something that has happened to me in a lot of different games. You go to an enemy camp because the game stamps it on your map and you've been clearing these camps out for a dozen hours or so. You go to clear out this base of enemies, because you're a huge fucking clown again, and then you leave and a couple hours later you do a story mission, and you and your NPC friends go to the camp you just cleared out. And oh, you think, I did this already and we can just leave, we're good to go. And remember when I called you a huge fucking clown? You wanna know why? It's because all the enemies are now reset and everything you did before was a total waste of time because you didn't do it when the game wanted you to. Now. Imagine an Ubisoft's recently announced Assassin's Creed Mirage. Basim meets an assassin who says to Basim, Hey, Basim, go to the city, and there are people there to kill. We have friends who can help you, but also we have many enemies, so be careful. Ubisoft doesn't give you a digital map or the pictures of people's faces because they didn't have cameras back then, and I know what you're going to say, I know the modern age person and the animus of these games controlling the player character and they have all this information readily available to them but literally no one cares just let me stab someone Ooh, bye so you go to the city you can seek out these people at your own pace complete activities that aren't shoved in your face and some guy on the street is like hey hey you seem like someone who's good at stabbing people do a job for me and i'll help you find that guy you're looking for and you're like oh wait Wait, can he really help me? So obviously, you're gonna do the mission because you need a lead to find the assassins and find the Templars that you're supposed to kill. So you do the mission for this guy. After the mission, you return to his hideout to tell him that you did his stupid job. And you overhear a conversation. And uh-oh, he's a Templar. Oh sh what the f Did the game intend for me to do that? Am I an idiot? Am I a bad guy now? Should I have done that? And now you're like, wait. I hate this guy, so you decide to kill him, and oh what, that guy was connected to the guys you were supposed to kill in the first place, and you raid his house, and he's got info on Templars with names and connections, and also because you found this guy, you also get a cool Templar weapon that you wouldn't have gotten if you didn't get into his hideout, and now whoopsies, because you did that mission, 
when you do find the assassins, they are super not cool with it. And when they say they're not super cool with it, you're like, you know what, assassin guy? I totally get that. That's my bad. I messed up. So now you have this cool story moment where you need to build trust within the assassin order because you worked with the enemy by accident and the intro to the assassins and your training make more sense because you, the player, are also a part of the mistake that Basim made and everything feels so much more immersive. You feel so engaged because you did all of that and the game didn't tell you to and you're so free and you're really doing it and you're actually an assassin in real life. It's so incredible. You just created an interesting and extremely memorable story moment by making a mistake. This is so crazy. So now let's be honest. 99% of players have never had a super cool experience like the one I just made up because of the nature of these open worlds. All of the things that could come about systemically rather than by the game grabbing your stupid clown baby hand and saying, hey little guy, go talk to the assassins. They're right over here in this exact location, but you can't do certain things until then. And also there are six Templars and they are rumored to be right here. And the guy staples a map to your clown forehead. And then they say, and when we say they're rumored to be there, we really mean they're literally in these locations 24-7, so just go there, literally whenever you want, okay, sweetie? And you know, kill them, and also, this is a photo of what they look like, so you can't possibly get it wrong, my dumb little sweet princess. As you can see, the game's design focuses on player freedom, discovery, and agency. They will remain engaged, feel more immersed, and have more unique experiences like these. They'll want to explore the world and engage in the best things the game has to offer on their own, rather than chasing icons on a cluttered and stress-inducing map. Whew. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy videos like these where I talk about games from a design perspective, please like and subscribe. It would help me out a lot. I hope you have a fantastic day, and God bless my dudes.